Good morning, everyone. I'm Bob Branch, and I want to welcome you this morning to this first installment of, we'll call it Trusting in Turbulent Times Devos in the Morning. And what I intend to do in these Devos is to, devotionals, is to uh, basically every day talk about, a, a bit about how we can focus on the Lord in these turbulent times. And I want to zero the lens in on who God is, uh, the truth about God, the truth about you. And my hope is that in these turbulent times that we can actually direct our attention um, both back up to the Lord and what's true about him and about us and create some perspective in that and then also encourage us to go out to others and to touch others uh, with the love that we receive ourselves. So what we're going to do is we're going to be in this next week, we're going to be going through Psalm 23. And Psalm 23 is a, a very famous psalm because it's it's brought tremendous amounts of comfort to people through, well, more than 2,000 years because it was written well before Jesus arrived on the scene. It was written by King David, one of the, actually, probably, if all things considered, the king, the one that was the the primary example of what it means to be a man after God's own heart. Now, David didn't start out as any body of particular importance. He's the youngest son of a large family, a, a very large family, the youngest son. And basically, he gets the sort of leftover types of jobs. And that means that he gets the the job of caring for the family's sheep flock. And so David is out with the sheep, you know, day after day after day. And, and caring for sheep is a bit different than any of the jobs that you and I are familiar with. It's not a nine to five job. Caring for sheep is a 24 seven job. It's a, it, it, you, you never actually get a break from it. You never get a vacation. So caring in, in the care of sheep is a, is this 24 seven job that is I think the only thing that we have that's very similar to that is motherhood. And motherhood is just, it just never stops. And so David is in care of these sheep. And and as he's spending night after night, day after day, caring for these sheep, <coughs> he starts to actually um, see the, the connection between how he cares for the sheep and how God cares for him. And so out of that, he being a musician and a singer, and a poet, he crafts this beautiful song to the Lord that we refer to as the shepherd song. But it's a song that that is it draws on the imagery of the constancy and the provision and the care of the shepherd. And so I want to read it to you this morning. We'll go for go through it over these next successive uh, weeks. We'll go through it a verse at a time, or maybe even a phrase at a time, just focusing in for maybe 5, 10, 15 minutes max on a daily basis just to kind of continue to draw us under the Lord's care. Now, here's the, the shepherd psalm, and I'm going to read to you from the New International Version, but I'll probably be switching the versions up on a daily basis. And as I look down at these words, I memorize this in the King James Version, so it's really hard for me to look at these actual words and read them without actually reading back in the King James, but I'm going to do my best. So bear with me here. It goes like this. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 23. That's the whole thing. 
Now, today, I want to focus just for a few minutes on that first verse. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. Other translations go like this. The Lord is my shepherd, I have all I need. That's the New Living Translation. Another one says, he gives me everything I need. Another one says, uh, the, the Lexham English Bible says, I will lack for nothing. Or the ESV or the King James Version says, I shall not want. Now, what's being said here is that God is a shepherd and that he never loses track of his sheep, that he's, and this is a word that we don't use that much, but it's a really beautiful word. He's vigilant. He's, he's constant. Uh, he, he, and he provides, he never loses track of his sheep, that he is a, he's vigilant in his watching over us. And so as a result of that, we have what we need, that God is sufficient for what we need. I love the way that I believe it's the missionary Hudson Taylor who said the God who who guides is also the God who provides. The God who guides also provides. And so there's, let's just say, five things that we want to grab from this morning's text. That is firstly, that, that God is a shepherd, that this is what he calls himself. Jesus actually calls himself the good shepherd in John chapter 10. So this is who God is, something of the very nature of, of who God is. He's not sort of passively sitting up there on a, you know, sitting in heaven in a rocking chair with a big beard, just sort of ambivalent toward, toward what's going on to you and your life or what's going on in our world. He's very engaged. He's hands-on. He cares about every Everything that is about you. And this is, I think this is important that, that God is a shepherd. That's who he is. He never loses track. He's vigilant. He's constant. Secondly, that he is your shepherd. That David doesn't just say the Lord is a shepherd. And so therefore we're taken care of. He says the Lord is my shepherd. That there's this ownership that, that God is his shepherd. He sees the care of God in his own life. And that's what we're being invited into today. We're being invited into the God who really cares about us. That he he's not off there somewhere passive, you know, uncaring, even though the, the circumstances might say to us that we want to interpret our life and our feelings through our circumstances, the reality is bedrock here is God himself. And God is not just a shepherd. He is my shepherd. He is your shepherd. If you trusted Jesus to save you, if you trusted Jesus as your savior, you got a shepherd. You've got somebody that's looking after you. That's not a matter in doubt. That's never in dispute. The circumstances may, and, and may just go all the hell everywhere, but God doesn't. He is with you and he is vigilant over you all the time. The third thing it says to us is that, is that it's a picture of God's care, that he's looking after you. He's looking after me. He's not uh, He's not just kind of saying, hey, make the best of it, human beings. You know, as good as this might get, just make the best of it. He's, he's not saying that. He's saying, trust me. You're under my care. You are in my arms. I'm never losing track of you. You're never for a second alone from me. You are never for a second by yourself. I am with you all the time. That that's one of the chief characteristics of a shepherd. The shepherd never leaves the sheep. Now, if you're back in, you know, early Palestine, the time that David is writing this, maybe that's not the job of all jobs because you just never get a break. But the reality is it's a beautiful picture of your God and my God. It's the, the picture that Jesus so beautifully details in, in everything that he does in his life, that there's no people that he comes across. There's no people that are below him. There's no people that are beyond his touch. The people that are untouchables, like the lepers, he goes and touches them. I mean, what is up with that? And so you're in the care of God. Don't forget that. In this time, as we're isolated and practicing our social distancing, which we're supposed to do, and that's good common sense, don't distance yourself from God because he, you're in his care. He is looking after you. The fourth picture in this is that word that I use, vigilance. And that is the, the idea that God never stops looking after you, that he is constant in this. Jesus said that even the hairs on your head are numbered. And, you know, 
the, not so much work on this one, but for you, the idea is that God never loses track of you. He cares about you to the vi very minute level that he is, he is looking after you and he never stops looking after you. He's here, to, he's here for you today. He is in the room with you right now or in the car or on the walk or wherever that you are listening to this, that God is there with you. He is constant. He is vigilant. And the fifth thing is that he provides. David says that because God is a shepherd, I I have everything I need. I lack nothing. Now, that doesn't mean you <laughs> you you don't have what you, you you might not have what you want because all uh, in America, we have a pretty big and serious want problem because we we want and want and want and want and want this and want that and want that technology piece and want that video game and want that car and want that house and want that girl or want that guy or want this, want this, want this. That's not what David is saying. Sheep don't have everything they want. Sheep have everything they need and that God will take care of the things that we need. And sometimes in these times of scarcity, we have to kind of be pruned back to the idea that Actually, maybe I want more than I actually need, and my wants have kind of taken me over. So perhaps today, one of the things that we need to remind ourselves is that ah, maybe my I've got a, as one of my friends used to say, a bad case of the wants, and now the Lord is meeting my needs, and I need to bed down in, I need to relax and rest in the care of my God. I need to rest in the care of my God. I remember years ago, we were we had uh, we're, we're going to move from Boston to here to uh, Southern California, and it was pretty traumatic as we thought about uh, about moving. Um, it kind of drudged up all these images of when my family moved from place to place to place to place. We moved something like twenty something times by the time I was sixteen, and so. Uh, yellow rider trucks were just just embedded in my soul as something that was negative because it all signaled that my family was falling apart. We were leaving friends and we were leaving the place where we were. So as we considered moving from Boston to here, Beck and her praying, and I just started to wail. I was so uh, dejected. I was so sad. I and and the <laughs> the thought of this whole move was so hard that I just thought, I'm going to need years of therapy if we're going to do this. What ended up happening, we was we, we just laid on our bed and we prayed and we cried cried to the Lord. And I cried. I went out, wept and wept and wept and wept. And I said, Lord, if you would provide, and I gave the Lord something like 15 different things that I was asking for that weren't like over the top, but in terms of the house that we were going to to, to rent when we got to Southern California and what we were going to do once we got there. And I was going to need a job and I was going to need this. And, and interestingly enough, in a, in a month's span from the time that we had prayed that to the time we found a house and moved our family out into Southern California, the Lord had met all 15 of those things that I had wept my guts out in trusting into his care. Folks, you can trust God and his care for you. You can trust God and his care for you. I want to say that to you today, that in the midst of all this, you can trust him. You can trust God in his care for you because he's not going to give up. He's not going to give you over. He's not going to let you out of his grasp that you are in his care. And you're in his care till you take your final breath of your life. Whenever that is, he's, you're in his care. And so Jesus said, I want to conclude with this, and then I want to pray for you, that Jesus said it this way. So don't worry about the things, these things saying, what will we eat or what will we drink or what will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly father already knows all of these needs. So seek the kingdom of God above all else and live right before him, and he will give you everything you need. So let's pray this morning. Father, I pray now for each one of the people that are listening in and will listen in later on with this. I pray for them that their hearts would now come to a great calm and that rest would take over where fretting and anxiety and worry are creeping up. And I ask you, Lord, that you would let your sweet spirit of rest rest on them all day long. And we ask you, Lord, we just direct our attention to you this morning. And we ask, Lord, for our, uh, for a, a fresh grace to move under your care and to stay securely under your care. 
the, the, the deal is we never are without your care, but we, I think, a lot of times fail, fail to be awakened to it. So awake us now, Lord, to your care today, and let us be infectious to the people that are in our worlds today. I pray for all these folks now, today, and myself, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks so much for tuning in. See you tomorrow morning at 9 a.m.